Hi everyone and welcome to A Mind Pod. Um, in this week's episode, um, the title of the episode is At Peace With Addiction and today I'm really, really, really excited and pleased to have with me Harry Dabritsky. Now, just a little personal um, introduction and then ha- I'm sure Harry will kind of well, Harry has, I, I could actually sit and listen to Harry for hours and hours and his stories of of time spent with Sid. Um, but I met Harry on um, Heartfelt Presence, which is a, it's a Zoom room that's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, um, with kind of coaches from all over the globe that where people can access the heartfelt space um, and there's always a coach in that room um, sharing sharing the principles and sharing what they've seen and it's it's a really beautiful space and I, I met Harry there and I will always be grateful to you Harry because um, I'm not a particularly I don't know, Harry might say differently, but I'm not a particularly loud and brash person. I'm not one of those people that kind of pushes themselves out. I would much rather sort of hide behind a bush and just like do my own thing, you know, do my kind of thing. And Harry has really encouraged me to come out from behind the bush and share more and try more and um he's invited me to be part of a group which is just the biggest blessing ever and we'll we'll speak a little bit about the group i'm sure so so harry i i'm just so grateful that we met because it's been it's been amazing and um yeah i'm just so grateful really really grateful i know you know that but just wanted to like make sure that you really really know that So just to start with Harry today, I know that you have done a lot of work, amazing work with addiction. I know you've got a book coming out and I was just wondering whether just to start off, whether you would mind sharing an interaction that you had with somebody that was struggling with addiction and what it was that you shared or where change came for them and I know you've been involved in lots lots of different projects can you think of kind of um anything in particular like a a a client case or um get a story that I just think that would be really helpful for anyone that is struggling with addiction to hear how interacting with you really changed everything for them. Right. Well, first, first, let's look at 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 what I do that might be a little bit different than they're used to. Uh, it's very. Uh, interesting for me to talk to people who have been addicted and then point them to a beautiful feeling inside of themselves. So if they have had the three principles, then there's a feeling of hope and they already know a lot about thought. Mm -hmm. So, but they don't know much about the spiritual reality and they have a very heavy feeling. So the first thing you notice with people who with addiction is they it's a heavy topic yeah. and they treat it as a heavy topic. Mm-hmm. And I'm saying it's a heavy topic, but let's not treat it as a heavy topic. Let's have an, a light feeling within yourself, because without this light feeling inside of yourself, you're, you're not going to head towards where healing is. Now, where healing is, is not in the form. So there's nothing that they can do mentally and and so on, or that I teach anyway. Uh, They have to go to the formless, to the silence before form is created. And that's the only place where there's healing. So I don't actually do anything with people. I just take them 
I just, we walk, I call it with the word that we have used, we dance. Yeah. And, and the, at a certain point, the music is heard. Because you know, you go on the dance floor and you're going one, two, three, four, and you think, when's my body going to start moving? And then at a certain point, you hear the music. And then before you know it, your body is moving. It's very similar to that. And then they step into that feeling. And, and, and when they catch that feeling, they automatically have a smile on their face and lighten up. But here's the interesting point. Did they bring themselves along for the experience? That's the key point in, in, the, in what, you, what you're trying to show. If they have a good feeling, which is taught in three principles, that's the healing power. It is. But if they don't bring themselves along and actually see the, what has been experiencing, they just have a good feeling, like a party. Oh, this feels good. <laughs> they still don't grasp the, the understanding that's required for them to see that that feeling came from them. So that's a process that you're, you're working through. And in addiction, uh, it's, uh, I was just thinking about that. When you have someone at the beginning of addiction, of the addiction re recuperation or recovery cycle, totally different than when somebody has gone through 80% of the recovery already, and now mm -hmm. they just need the last 20% of the, of the scenario. It's the same scenario because if you're stuck, you're stuck no matter where you are in the process. But, but, the, but the, uh, uh, it's a different dynamic. So I'm going to give you two dynamics. You know, one, one with, with, a, uh, with a client who that was more at the beginning and one with a client who I'm working with right now who's, who's already covered 80% of the recovery process himself, still, still taking methadone from heroin, et cetera, but, but already has, has seen things. So the first one doesn't see much. They don't see what is false. They don't see what is true. The second one understands what is false and, and has a sense of what is true. And so that's a two totally different mm -hmm. thing. So the first one, uh, I was thinking of this guy, uh, 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 fent he likes fentanyl, which is a very heavy street drug and, and so on. And, um, uh, and so he would never, hear anything he'd say he see they're always going to say i got it i, yeah. I i'm never going to do it again i because they have a good feeling yeah and, and and we're sharing and you know people with me they say well actually it's not really therapy or counseling it's more like play yeah. you know and that's probably why i'm in the addiction field nikki is because i'm light yeah. you know I, i'm not a, i'm not a guy i don't like being heavy and I don't approach life from that perspective. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's my style, you know, that's my, that's who I am. And so uh, you, you talk and you go through and they say, I've got it. And, what, and, they, and they might listen to a tape by Sidney Banks or something like that. And they say, that guy was cool and, and all this, but they haven't, they haven't internalized it. Yeah. And so, so they relapse. Mm -hmm. And so this guy, Every time he relapsed, it was the only time he listened. See, it shocked him that he was actually bullshitting, or excuse the expression, yeah. himself. And he, he came in humble. He had lost his cell phone. He had ended up in jail. He was on the street, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And so he listened. And then and he would, he would then we would go as deep as, as we could go. And then he would get that good feeling again. And then he would stop listening, but, but believe that he was listening. Type of, and he'd do it three or four times. So I want to talk about this process of relapse with the, because he, he continued, he relapsed three times, which in my approach to things is so what? It's like a zero. I fall down and make mistakes all the time, yeah. every day. I don't beat myself up on it. And if I do, it doesn't help except make it last longer. Yeah. So, so there he immediately thought, oh, I've got no churchy 
you should do this. This is a this is a lesson. That, and if you, if you don't use your willpower, you're going to be, you know. So there was not the it was the opposite. My job was to get him off feeling lousy about himself, that he was feeling guilty. And so we 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 would get a, a, a lift. And as I mentioned, that's the only time he was listening. And so he listened and then he'd relapse and then he'd go in and then he'd listen again. And then he, so he took a, a certain amount of what I was sharing with him and then he had enough. And, and I, I went, that's a spiritual journey. That's the way, that's, that's it. And of course, it really uh, helped him tremendously because I'm not teaching him to get off addiction. I'm teaching him to be happy and content and to be a better human being. He wants to experience his potential. Uh, so that's what, I, that's what I'm talking to. I'm talking to, to that. It's not my job to tell people when they should get off addiction. You, everybody knows addiction is, yeah. it can be like that or piece by piece. Mm -hmm. My co-host on Addiction, Alcohols, and Three Principles, we met very similarly to you, Nikki. Very similar. Uh, we just met and it took off. I saw what an incredible level of consciousness. You had just had a fresh insight. I says, I got to work with this lady and maybe help her a little bit, temper her a little bit, but she's really got a beautiful potential and she's knocking my socks off with this powerful insight and she's sharing it in such a powerful way. And the same thing happened with my co-host, Greg Suki. Um, we were, we got together on Zoom. I'll make it real short story. And we really, both of us were, determined that it would be five minute talk at the most. <laughs> like probably you, maybe when I came on and you saw it, so, well, nice Harry, but uh, I've got to talk to my people. And, uh, and, then, and then you saw what happened. Sim exactly the same thing. And, and so he thought I was on the make for money, at, which it was absolutely. And, he, and I thought I was gonna, he, there was a question that someone, some expert in 3P had asked. <laughs> Except, except they didn't answer it. But again, in 3P, you can say anything and a lot of people will just go, oh, fantastic. You know, I just hate that. I just hate that. Fantastic what? And she didn't even answer the question. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and so that was our purpose. And then, boom, he told me about his insight. I said, it didn't sound anything like mine, but I said, gee, that's as deep as the one I had on Salt Spring. And I said, that was that soul to soul connection. See, that's what you're looking for in addiction. Soul to soul connection. That's all that helps people. Yeah. All the rest of it is a waste of time. It's just a bunch of words. It's that, that connection. And when they connect into that space, that us space where yeah. we both are there, then that's healing. And where the healing comes is formless. It's not, it's God's design. I'm not, it's not Harry's design. I don't have an objective here. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a, so we got together and he had had an insight in AA that in one second, he dropped his total urge, total 100% urge to drink. Nice. And he was a heavy alcoholic like that and he hadn't been in 3p yet but he but what happened was 12 months later he bumped into 3p and he says oh there's a language to describe my insight what i have experienced and then he took to it and then we started a show addiction alcohols from three principles a guy who knew nothing about addiction but i was now working in a recovery center and uh, a guy who was an expert on addiction, but I had, I was teaching the spiritual nature of thought. He, he was teaching, uh, he, he had all, he was the subject matter expert. And then, and then he exposed me. So what I'm teaching you about relapse is what I learned from him. See, if you talk to the best person in the world about a subject, you just, you just go, you don't have to go through all that other stuff. You just go, Shh, 
you see, it was an advantage being a virgin. <laughs> you know, it was like, you know, you, you like you don't know, but you're interested to know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And so hey, that. Harry, I, I, well, I, well, personally, I love to hear you talk about, and I'd, I'd love it if you could share. Now, I, I know that you knew Sid really well, and I don't get to speak to people that knew Sid. And so whenever I do, it's, it's fascinating. And I always think what a blessing it was for you to have known him. As this episode is about addiction, can you think of times when Sid talked about addiction? Because I, I'm well, I usually talked about it once, and uh, uh, and what was interesting, he he hardly ever he talked about it, but he talked about you see, Sid's talking about the spiritual nature of thought, and in the spiritual nature of of thought that's different than the psychological approach to thought mm -hmm. it, it really implies the psychological is taken care of because you're in that space and you just kind of self-navigate to yeah. where where, yeah. where where you yeah. go type of thing so that was primary so he talked about about that now i, I put out on in our a podcast series and also in our addiction alcohols and three principles youtube channel uh his talk on that uh, that particular thing but i remember his longer talk and and basically uh he, he he i don't even remember him mentioning addiction or alcoholism because he was just talking about healing yeah. and so some a, a, a professor or something of some kind of a uh, guy got up and says, well, don't you want them to get off alcohol? And he says, well, of course, what have I been talking about? You know, <laughs> but he never mentioned that was because he yeah. was just talking about changing thought. Now, when people hear that, they think it's like picking apples or oranges or my willpower. Dr. Amy Johnson, who, who's a psychologist and quite different than I am, but I like working with her because she's she defines things really well and she's very acute in understanding what's on the mind of people and she deals with it. Well, she's a psychologist. I don't do that type of stuff. And uh, uh, so she had the, it, in her book a no willpower approach to whatever it is. Yeah. I have I have felt that has been a powerful teaching tool for me because. It, it clearly explains the difference between mental, eh, I can't, I have a choice, and changing thought, which is which is the connection to the totality of the oneness and how it all works, in, as as part of a, as part of the uh, sharing of love, sharing of the spiritual universe process. So Sid's talking on a spiritual level of changing thought principle of thought versus the way people are hearing mm -hmm. hear, hearing it you can't tell me that if you don't change your if god sends you a message and you accept it decide to change away from your mental thinking into a spiritual direction within coming from inside and out you're not going to experience a healing process and and if you see it see that's consciousness that's the problem people have in, in addiction is they're, they're they're used to partying they're used to getting it they're used to they everything is geared to release of the urge or the stress but the the reality of it is is that they're actually changing thought yeah but they they're using the drug and it's like going on vacation are you going to bring yourself along or are you going to just have a good time when the vacation is good? The reality of it is, is that you can have a good time no matter what, what you're doing on vacation. But you, as you relax and as you get into, and that's why in Hawaii, they say it takes three days for you to stop dropping your eggs, which means you I'll get out of your head type of thing. And to the, you know, when you see people, they arrive in Hawaii, they're walking on the beach, 
and they're looking around and everybody's, you know, my bathing suit's half falling off and I'm, I'm just sort of walking like this and they're, they're, they're looking around, you know, and, and, and they just don't get it. And then you see the person in three days, his bathing suit <laughs> half falling off. You know, looking, you know, it's, it's, it's like that, changing thought. What, what, what happened? It was at Hawaii. No, the person changed within. They, they got it. I think that's so that's for people listening that will be so um something new that they probably haven't had and also so refreshing you know what your approach and Sid's approach is so when you you know you were talking about what you do and saying but I, I don't really talk about the addiction no you, I, I'm not I, I'm not you know I'm not interested and and what you just described there about Sid talking about <laughs> giving a presentation about addiction but not actually talking about addiction because kind of like to me it sort of almost looks like if we're dealing with the addiction it, it's it's too late like it's in the form that's exactly what he says it's in the form and the answer is in the formless yeah so, so all of that yeah, like all of the traditional kind of psychological approaches to addiction are, well, in actual fact, I believe that you can apply that to any mental health diagnosis, actually, in any psychological approaches, you're dealing with the form. You, and it's too late. <laughs> you need to, you need to go back. You need to go back, you know, like, not, not back in time, but you've got to go into the formless. To... It's the only place. See, that, that's, that's why the psychological model has an inherent weakness in it. Mm. As because it's a spiritual psychology. And the spiritual is the, is the, is, encompasses the psychological. It, 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 it's part of. There's no difference between the two on one level. But until you see that, there is a big difference because you're working at here. I work after everybody went on Salt Spring to the psychological direction. I said, that's not for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I went in the indigenous direction. I followed where I had to go. And, and I obviously working in the indigenous world, there was a lot of drugs and alcohol. It's an inherent scenario there now there was nothing i wasn't i still there were things i didn't understand so i want people to understand just because you have an insight doesn't mean you're a pro at everything you're talking about and if you got a big ego me i had a very big ego and why most people say well it hasn't changed that much uh you know but the but the the scenario is is I had a lot of things that I were a lot of beliefs, a lot of stuff that I had to work through. So when I was working with people in 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 in, uh, in the indigenous world, I was hopeless at addiction, hopeless. And uh, and so when when I had sort of taken a, a relaxation of mind type of thing, I won't go through that. I then got offered at age 69. Now we're talking 27, 69, quite a gap between all the, and I got offered to work in this recovery center of just, a, just an hour and a half a week, you know, not, you know, but, and, and I said to myself, well, this is the area I'm the worst in, let alone, you know, but I had, was now in a different place. So when I went in and talked to the people, first thing I noticed was the reason I was unsuccessful is what you are stating, Nikki. I was trying to fix them. I would get into the description of the problem and try and make that better. They did felt guilty. So we would talk, you know, and, and all this stuff. All, all of a sudden, so low mood stuff, low mood mm -hmm. stuff. And then I went in with no preconceived idea, really thinking, well, I probably won't do this project because I don't like addiction, but I loved it. And the difference was I wasn't talking. It was just, I was talking. The people 
first of all, a diksha guaranteed to be spiritual more than ordinary people. They have suffered. They have taken drugs. They have looking for an answer and there is no answer. And they're looking in the spiritual understanding of life. So A, they have a, 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 a inherent advantage over people who haven't suffered to the degree that they have. You want to grow spiritually, suffer, but you know it's not recommended for a good yeah, easy, yeah. <laughs> easy life. I don't like it, so I don't want to do it all the time. Yeah. Type, type of it. So that was interesting. The other thing was it was so heavy, as I mentioned, the jokes really were well received, and and you know me, I do like to have a few, one or two of those, and uh, and I just then. Here, here is a guy who had was emerging from his old skin, letting that loose. But the problem in the world is nobody listens. Nobody listens. Everybody's an authority on everything. And even though they'd say, they're not listening. They're, like it's like a person, you're, you take them through a feeling. They don't see it. You know, they just go through the feeling. They don't take the good stuff. They just take the take, oh, that was a good party. I feel better for 20 minutes. You know, <laughs> I thought you were here for a little longer than that. And, and so the, the, the thing I noticed was they really wanted an answer. They knew the bullshit. You see, that's part of the process of healing and addiction, healing and mental health, healing in, in, in anxiety, healing in fun. You have to know what's false. Yeah. AA does not work for most people. AA is teaching a disease model. We are teaching a health model. Uh, the, the, they talk a lot about ego thought and really into it. And we're talking about spiritual nature of thought. It's a whole different type of flavor and, and stuff like that. And they... I thought, well, three principles, they're going to like puke on it. <laughs> you know, that's what I thought. You know. But they actually were, oh, it's fresh and new. Yeah. Well, it's Harry, it's light and lighthearted. That, that's, 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 you know, for me, in my introduction, that, you know, and, you, and, and you saying about the truth my the first thing i heard i heard truth i didn't understand a word the person was saying but i heard truth and it felt like i i felt like the weight of the world had been lifted off my shoulders it felt like light-hearted hopeful that and that's it and people just you come from that space and then people kind of are, are like i was wide-eyed you know it's like you say it's new and it's fresh and and then there's the soul to soul connection. Is sorry? And from that, you know, from that seeing and hearing truth and hearing something that's new and fresh, you then they they connected with you. Of course, of course. That's the whole idea. See, it's not really psychology, it's original psychology. And original means it's, it comes from the moment that it's fresh and new. Yeah. And that's what, we're not teaching a book. We're not teaching, we're not teaching the three principles verbalage. We're, teach, we're teaching what we're living, what we're experiencing, what we're seeing. And we notice that if we share a genuine insight with people like you shared with me, it pulled me in. I went, oh, far out. Uh, this, is, this is good stuff, the good stuff. Everybody knows the good stuff. It's called love. It's love. And, and who doesn't want more love? Yeah. Everybody wants more love. That unlimited love that you have inside of you, that unlimited potential, total freedom. That's what I teach in addiction not partial and this and that and it's a big long process total freedom because that's what i want 
Yeah. I want to be totally free of my own bad habits. Do I have bad habits? Well, it turns out I'm an ordinary human being with lots of bad habits. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? And when someone punches me in the nose, my nose bleeds. <laughs> oh, but it's just thought. Well, my nose is bleeding, so I better get a handkerchief. <laughs> yeah. You know, so so you're you're sharing spirit. And that's the indigenous way of looking at life. So all that happened when I went into the indigenous way was I found I uh, opened up portals in me that wouldn't have been opened up if I didn't go into that world. And then I went and started to talk about that in the 3P world, not one person was interested, except Sid. And so I, I said, well, it's a waste of time talking to these blithering idiots. They, as long as they're in their field of psychology and stuff, they're, you know, they're the experts. That's what they wanted to be, the experts. But they didn't know anything about the indigenous world and what they experience and how they see spirit and stuff. So I simply just, took that in there, put it in my bag, like you're putting your bag in working with, with our group, the pursuit of, of, uh, of, of truth regarding mental health, and we're putting it out. Now, here's the joke. We, we've got this group, uh, six of us, seven of us, and we meet once a week, and now we're, giving, we're, we're going to be doing about six or seven or eight or 10 talks around England and stuff like that. Uh, in mental health uh, and so on. And I'm the lead coach and you, uh, all the others are coaching each other. So it's not a top down type of process, but here's the joke. I've never taken a psychology course. How, how am I the lead coach in mental health? Well, I know a lot about mental health, but I certainly don't know the terminology and stuff like that. And so, it, it's interesting, but that virgin mind that I talked about, mm -hmm. it, it can sense. So I pick, it's a closed group. You notice it's not open to the public. It's a closed group of people who've had transformational experiences that, that will help other people to drop their beliefs around mental health and around the psycho psychology that you were talking about. And, and what, what, what I saw was no one will listen to Harry Derbitsky, nobody. But people will listen to the fruit on the trees, the proof of the teachings of Harry Derbitsky. They will listen to that. Mm -hmm. and, that's, and what is that? That's Salt Spring. That's all. Salt Spring was the fruit of Sidney Banks's teaching. And without the fruit, the psychologists would not have come like they did. And did he leave, have to leave most of us behind? Yeah, but he didn't really leave us behind because it wasn't his job. It was God's job and it was our spiritual journey. And so they took it out into the world. We never would have, you know, and you know, you notice in our group, certain people take it out. Yeah. And certain people, they share it. Yeah. You know, it's a different, it's a different, and, and so I saw clearly that we're not talking about mental illness, obviously. Uh, we have unbelievable transformational yeah. thing of which the only job I really have is for people to see who they are now. And that was, that's what happened with John. I was talking to, to one of the members uh, John Stiley, I I, I'll mention him anyway. I already have, so it's too late. And uh, and he's he, he has this a very very a high way of soaring into the spiritual reality. Yeah. Very 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 uh, easy for him. But he says I feel a bit like a fraud or a phony because I also have all my personal problems and my thought. I says, you don't understand separate realities. Of course, when you're just when you're just on your own individual life, Nikki has thoughts of pain and different things that oh, she experienced. Yeah. Experience. I have thoughts, but that's when you all of a sudden when you step on the stage in the Zoom room or or in our in our 
meetings that we have once a week, um, uh, it's a different space. Yeah. It just happens. So what I'm sharing now is a space that I'm in with sharing with Nikki, a feeling. But when it stops, guess what's going to start again? My mind will come back on. And I'll be this ordinary guy with all these things. And first thing probably will be, gee, I'm hungry. I better eat something, <laughs> you know, or, or something like that. Or, oh, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, and, and what I'm going to do next. And it's, a, see, it's separate realities. Yeah. You just, so, so the group learn, has a trouble accepting who they are. My job is simply to say, Oh come on, you you your you your story is powerful, and it helps because you're salt spring. You're the fruit on the tree, and people and it's been proven already with the carry you know coming on. People will listen to the fruit. They will not listen to the original source of the expression. And that's so. Sid saw that, and they went out and they took it out, and he realized. Um, you know, a lot of people that should, you know, you're listening to an enlightened human being should be just like that, eh? But obviously it isn't. <laughs> yeah. So it's an interesting journey. Helping people with addiction is being not attract, attached to the results. Working with people in addiction is seeing it as no different than anything else in the world it's just their what their god path to experience god within themselves and when they break free of it it's like the path of the warrior what is addiction it's a thought that is fear-based what are you afraid of you're afraid of love welcome to the club wow that's quite profound harry oh well thank you very much yeah. No, like uh, I hadn't, I hadn't kind of seen it like that. Like I, I get the, the fear that that I, I see that driving force, but fear of love. That's that's quite profound. So, would you say fear of self love? Well, or it's fear of the feeling. Well, both, all of it, all of it. it it's all inter intermingled it's a quantum reality where everything is intermingled with each other it's like uh, uh i wrote in my book thought is lingering energy because it's a tendency to think of thought feeling you know yeah. but, it, but it seeps from the past and into the future it's a continuum so everything is interrelated and so when you start talking about love you're really talking about universal love of God and then it go back to my favorite thing because this is what I miss what did I miss on salt spring you know we haven't talked about that we've talked about how great I am and how wonderful I am and all this stuff but what did I miss that made me delay my involvement for so many years I I simply did not see the message that Sydney Banks was talking about. I was a fool. I experienced it, but I didn't bring myself along in the journey. I thought it was the man, not the message. And I worshiped the man. And as long as I worship false idols, because his message was always one thing. It's in you, Harry. It's in you, Harry. It's in you. And I go, no, I, I, yeah, I can see it's in me because I'm here with you. Yeah, yes. Because every time, like, you want to know what a feeling with Sid was like, it was like an escalator going, Shh. he just had so much energy. Oh, just gorgeous stuff. Shh. And what stopped me from just, because obviously I was soaring with it, what stopped me from soaring? This is the most important thing for people to learn with addiction, with, with staying in truth. It's a, I lost my gratitude for what I had was experiencing in my life. That's what cost me 
as soon as you lose your gratitude, Nikki, for what you have, you're lost. Guaranteed, guaranteed. And so I lost my gratitude. And as I lost my gratitude, my ego, my mental thinking started to be like a spider web around the experience I had. That's addiction, a spider web around the truth of love. And so that spider web, and then bit by bit, I, it started to, psh, the tentacles started to evaporate. But here's the good part. While that was happening, which is the sort of a description of how you free yourself from your own thinking, your own beliefs, I was developing all these skills that were needed for when I was at 69, ready to go into the world and help and make change. And you notice that I have a lot of skills in the project that we're working in with the pursuit of truth regarding mental health. You notice that I'm not just a teacher of three principles. Mm. You notice I, the papers needed to be written. I know how, I know how to get it on the mm -hmm. computer. I have a I have a real skill set that nobody else has in 3P. Well, that's who I am. You see, I did, I never I never thought it was just this. And what am I? I'm an educator. I have known that for a long time. So when I built the three the three uh, uh, addiction alcohols and three principles YouTube channel, I built it like nobody else built it. I built it so it'd be a resource for all of time. And now I'm making podcasts from the webinars, but it's all set up. It's an educational resource. Yeah. And what is the perp what's the difference between an educator and a, and a counselor or a therapist? A therapist is dealing with a problem and you have to fix the problem. Educator is totally different. If you grow just a quarter of a centimeter in your understanding of how mind works, it's a success. Any upgrade in education is a success, small or big. Yeah. And all you're trying to do is help people understand how mind works. That's it. That's all, it, you know. And how does, how does the little mind and the big mind work together? Because it said distinctly in, in Missing Link, there's not two minds. There's just one mind work, doing, working two different ways. Something like that, he said. And, and so if that's true, then it's hollow bones. That's a fool's crow Indian thing of when he's healing, it's hollow bones, <sighs> right through. So that's how you live, hollow bones. When you have addiction, you've clog, clog up the hollow bones with pollution. Yeah. And welcome to the club. I do it too. Yeah. That makes me yeah, happy. You mean, and every human being on the planet. You know, that's so that's how it works. See yeah. that how it works. You, you know, you, you know. I had a, a fish, my fish tank here in the background. It, I noticed the water wasn't going down, and the, the, I put some food. It wasn't, and then I went and pulled the the tube out that connects, and and a, and a bunch of poop, uh, like yeah. crap flew out, and then I put it in, and it flowed through. Yeah. It's like that, isn't it? That's it. So that's that's my job. Yeah. <laughs> I love it's that. Not a big job, but it's it's a least oh. job. Yeah, yeah. Harry, I know that you're in the process of finishing your third book. Can you um do do you know when it's gonna be out? And can you tell us just a little bit about um yeah, it's, what, it's, what people yeah, it's a good question. First of all, it'll be out uh, definitely within a month. It will be out, but probably two weeks or so. It's really at the the final stages, and uh, the refinement to get it just just you know because if once it goes out, it's not going to change much, obviously. So so uh, you know it's this final stages. So it's. And it's interesting because it's called Evolution of Addiction Recovery Reopened. So I have book book two. It's uh, so it's a, and on on it, it there's there's two things I want want to express. The first thing, the first book um, uh, is the a guy is in a tunnel on the picture of the cover, and yeah. it's it's looking out to the 
to the opening. And it says addiction. Got it right here. Addiction. You won't, they won't see this. There is a way home. Yeah, yeah. 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 And and at that point when I wrote the, this book, I was more insecure of who I am. Uh, and and I want so I was already given a lot of accolades for my work in addiction and so on, but I still felt inferior in certain ways. I needed to piggyback on the psychologist and what they, so I brought a lot of that in and I didn't really understand, you know, I, I've never been really big on this thought thing, like, like everybody else's type of thing. So I piggybacked a little bit on that until, see, and, and then at a certain point, like you, Nikki, you get clearer and clearer and clearer. And that's what, that's all I'm teaching you is all you have to do is get clearer and clearer who you are. And so that was, and, and I wrote it for doctors and psychologists. I paid a lot of money to an editor to get it, you know, the English correct, because, you know, people who are educated want a really clean sentence, you know, and, uh, and, and so on. And it was, a, it was, and it, went out and it's in treatment centers and I've got lots of good positive feedback and some people, you know, say, oh, it's not just straight and narrow. It's, it's you know, I say, well, that's your way, you know, I'm glad you it works for you, but it's not. And um, so that, so I felt really good. Now it's two years later and Spirit says to me, you got to write another book. And I go, I don't want to write another book. <laughs> It's a lot of work, you yeah. know? but the spirit said that. So I said, well, I don't have anything to say. I just wrote a book two years ago. I don't know anything about the subject anyway. So what do I have to write another book for? But so the first thing is it's 42 chapters. So obviously I must've found something yeah. To, yeah. <laughs> to write about. And there are 42 insights. See. That's, I learned, Sid said, I couldn't understand why people weren't understanding what I was talking about after he became enlightened. And then I realized I was sharing insights. So basically whatever insights would come, like you mentioned, you know, you, we, you've talked quite a bit with me about your insights, you know, and how, how you know, you get really turned on by them. And, uh, re, and they're really beautifully expressed and I really love them and stuff. And, and so I, the book is 42 insights, you know, that's basically what it is. And, and about addiction type of thing. But the, in, so the second book is addiction. There is a way to total freedom. And it's a totally different concept than someone stuck in the tunnel. Mm -hmm. This person on, is in the cover is, like standing on a little piece of land and it's a panoramic view. It's really beautiful and gorgeous. And their, their hands are up and they're experiencing, you know, what you were talking about, love, the universal love of themselves and their connection to the love of the universe. And, and in that process, I found my voice. You see, I'm the same as you, Nikki. I underestimated who I had become. It's, it's, John was the same way. The story I told you about John, he felt, well, I'm a bit of a phony, except when I talk, I just go like, soar like the universe type of thing. Well, obviously there's two Johns there. And, and, and so as I'm writing this story, I said, and, and I'm including, I, I don't need, anybody else and i deliberately keep all of that away this is my book of what i see and what i but i had to see this is who i had arrived at and become because the truth is if you listen if you absorb the true message of truth as uncovered by sydney banks you will live beyond your dreams your life will become better than your imagination of who you are. Like I'm doing stuff far beyond what I ever expected. Because of course I was a failure most of the time. And then, and then somebody opened the dam and the floodgates happened. And I, I mentioned, talked to John, I said, well, when I first started, 
and 69 years old. I do a talk like this, fantastic. I go, yeah, but the next one's gonna stink. <laughs> you know, yeah. Then the next one would come and I'd be have the, you know, the trepidations and stuff. And it was fantastic. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it, the next one, this is two, <laughs> this is already two. But see, it didn't stop. And I, at a certain point, I stopped questioning it. And then I realized there was something different that had happened. I had gotten out of the way. And I stopped caring about me yeah. and what I was creating. It just, I didn't have to talk in an egocentric manner about me, 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 me. Yeah. And what I didn't need compliments from people. I didn't need their opinion about how I was doing. That's very important. See, the problem with addiction is you're listening to everybody but the truth. That's addiction. Yeah. And everyone's got a big opinion about it. And guess what, people? That's not where the answer is. It's in you. I know. Yeah. If, if I have told Nikki 50 times, if she listens to me or follows me, I'm going to be really pissed off. <laughs> I will, I will be. I will be. Because I know how destructive that is, Nikki. That's, see, see how you teach what you have learned the hard way? I followed Sidney Banks with as an idol. He was a false idol. It wasn't him who was the false idol. It was my belief. And when I, when I gave it up, I found out this job of teaching three principles as you mentioned, kind of a piece of cake. What do you do? You get out of the way. Yeah, and yeah I think this is it, isn't it? I think, you know, we stop being front page news, don't we? That's it. I it's did. unimportant. It's unimportant. Yeah, yeah. And, and even the, the, you can see the image that we have for pursuit of truth regarding mental health. It's, you know, I said, well, what do you call, what should I call myself? Because I, but I, but I didn't want the strength of the group is the fruit. Yeah. Not, not that I'm the lead coach. People have, people have heard me all over the place. When they hear the fruit, that's what will change. And, and the stories that people tell, people will tell stories of transformation and yeah. they'll go, me too. I can do that. Yeah. And I'm I'm actually, I've got, um, I'm going to be talking to two group members in a couple of weeks. And, and so that's going to be um, a wonderful episode. We're going to do an episode on mental health and speak to John and Joe, who are both in the group and have had, well, we kind of, we've talked a little bit about John today, but just amazing transformations. And so, yeah, that's, that's going to be a cool episode. But I just wanted to uh, finish off today by first of all kind of thanking you, Harry, because I, I you know, I, I have to kind of end it now, but I could just let you carry on and sit and listen to your story. So I really could just, you know, keep the tape running. If people are at all interested in anything that you've said or where, how can they get in touch with you? How can they find you? Well, I have a website, ACT Training dot b i z so it's the name of my company and and it has all the information has podcasts and projects and it's got tons of stuff and you're so on facebook have, harry aren't you i am yeah Her, harry derbitsky on facebook certainly that is that as well youtube channels and podcast lots of lots of educational material and um, uh, uh yeah and if you feel attracted or you feel that maybe I can help you, certainly, certainly come in contact with me. And, and, and regarding money, I, it, I actually have a, a process now. I say, you pay me what you want and if you can't afford anything, pay me nothing. And as, as Nikki knows, most of the stuff I do is pro bono. Okay. But, yeah. but, but the reality is that, uh, you know, one client paid me an exorbitant amount of money and I went, well, that's good, actually. I kind of noticed the bank account went out. <laughs> yeah. and, and I also felt that she was showing respect 
for for what she was getting and she got the best of service say eh? she got the answer to her problem i want to end with this story so she hired me because i spoke about the spiritual nature of the principles rather than the psychological nature and that's what she was looking and she had a problem with anxiety so we did 10 sessions together the truth was uh, uh, after two it was yeah. it was actually fine but yeah, yeah. She paid for 10 sessions yeah, so, she, yeah. so she's getting 10 sessions how, how many times did we talk about anxiety uh, I, I know i know uh, probably zero i would imagine harry knowing you never, and, and never, knowing... Never, i never even mentioned the word yeah. after the second session i said to her well how are things going because it's you know a standard question yeah. and, and she said well actually it's been a really easy week i says well that sounds a lot better than anxiety doesn't it I, so i did mention it once yeah 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 and that's the reality of yeah. it you, you forget about it and stuff so i look at anxiety i look at addiction i'll tell you something that's 10,000 harder harder subject than addiction indigenous now that's complicated addiction that's not that's not a big deal that's that is a big suffering yes but and the urge is overpowers yes i understand that but it's not a big deal They're not in the healing process it, it's obvious it's I think, I think hearing you today is going to bring so much relief to a lot of people so harry thank you so so much thank you for <laughs> agreeing to to come on this with me and um yeah thank, uh, you. thank you oh and thank you nikki <laughs> you're so very welcome so yeah that's all for this week everybody and i will see you all next week take care thanks so much again harry see you soon take care bye 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 bye